fish. I just think that fish think that this is a gross fish. Oh, man. What's up reefers? Tyler Oxford here with another reef tank update. So I'm really excited for today's video because we're gonna be talking about my recent live aquaria order in which I ordered my two favorite fish, um, the mandarin or dragonette fish. Now I have two favorites. I um, really like the green mandarin. I like the ruby red dragonette. Um, I like those fish so much I was trying to decide which of those fish I should go ahead and add to my tank. I decided I like them both so much that I just went ahead and ordered both of them. I finally at the stage in my tank where things are really kicking in. I've definitely got a really great live um, pod population, which is really important when you're ordering a mandarin or a dragonet fish. I've personally had these fish before in other tanks. Um, and whereas these fish, I think get a bad reputation for being like an expert level only fish. I disagree with that. I think these are really easy fish to take care of. There's really only one prerequisite to purchasing this fish. And that's just making sure that you've got a good pod population since most of these dragonets and mandarins nowadays um, will only eat uh, pod populations that are already existing in your tank. If you don't have pods, it's not an issue. You can go usually to your local fish store or on Amazon and order pods and put them in your tank. I actually haven't even done that. Um, they just seem to be there. My only concern as we take a look at this order is that the fish I've ordered might be too small. So I've got one fish in the tank um, in particular that I'm a little worried about. Uh, that would be Wilbur, my porcupine pupper. So I've actually put a ruby red dragonette in my tank before who mysteriously disappeared. I can't find him. And I noticed that as I was temperature acclimating him, sitting the bag on top of the tank, Wilbur actually tried to eat him through the bag. Now I can't prove that Wilbur actually ate the fish once he was released into the tank, um, but he came in so small Honestly, I wouldn't blame my porcupine pupper if he confused this tiny one inch ruby red dragonette for the krill I'm usually feeding him by hand. So I'm hoping that I get good sized dragonettes here that aren't an inch in length, but maybe closer to two inches, three inches. We'll see. I noticed that from live aquaria, if I order mandarins or dragonettes, they're usually on the small side. So we'll see today. First, actually, we have to kind of even figure out if these things came in alive. So let's take a look. All right, guys. So this is the ruby red dragonette. Honestly, this is kind of my favorite. Okay, between this is probably that was my scary. Favorite. If I had to pick one of these fish, I would pick this one. So let's hope that this one has made it. Okay. Yes, it is alive. Check that out, guys. Are you guys able to see that? Not even sure. He's alive, folks, and he's a male. And he's pretty good size, too. Yes, this will definitely do. I kind of prefer having males over females just in the mandarin and dragonette space because the male dragonettes come with these really cool fins that they can erect, no pun intended, they can kind of extend as um, maybe predator fish are coming close to them. And these fins are like super beautiful. They add color. Honestly, it's really cool when you get a male. All right, that's one of our fish. Now, let's take a look at this green one. I think most people like the green dragonets because they're so colorful. I'm just afraid, since I have a ton of blue light, and this is kind of a tip for everyone, if your lights for your tank are super blue, Green dragonets might not look that colorful in your tank. They kind of just seem to blend in, is what I've noticed. Now, if you don't have a ton of blue light, and maybe your spectrum is a little whiter, white fur, then they're super colorful. And honestly, they're like one of the more beautiful fish in the hobby. I think everybody kind of knows that. Okay, this one, they put one of those blinders on it. So usually what I do is I turn this upside down nice and slow just to see if a live fish comes out the bottom. He's alive, folks. And it is a he. Yes. Well done. Well done, live aquaria. This is really cool. And this is a really good size one, so. Now some of you might be wondering um, if it was wise to order two of kind of the same species of fish. In my experience of having dragonets, having 
two dragonets of different species or colors. Ruby reds, green spotted, green mandarin, red mandarin, totally fine. They, they have never fought in my experience. Now if you have two of the exact same species, so two male ruby red dragonets, um, then you're rolling the dice. Then they can fight, they can compete. It's actually kind of cool if you can get a pair of ruby red dragonets or green mandarins um, as they that are male and female. If you do that, they can actually breed in captivity. This is a fish that's been successfully bred in captivity. In fact, if you order a captive bred mandarin slash dragonet fish, um, a lot of them have been bred to go ahead and eat the, the food that you give the rest of the tank. If they're coming from the sea, ruby, ruby red dragonets and, and green mandarins, uh, in my experience, will typically not eat what you feed your fish. Apparently there's a way to train mandarins to go ahead and eat the food that you're giving the rest of your fish by introducing that food in a pipette with some pods so that they can kind of get an idea that, hey, not just the pods, but the food is good for them and they'll go ahead and eat those. But if you get a captive red mandarin, typically out of box, literally in this case, they're gonna go ahead and eat the food that you give to the rest of the fish. That's the ultimate goal because keeping up pop populations within a tank can be tedious, especially if you have a newer tank or you don't have a refugium. Um, otherwise, it's as simple as just adding uh, a bottle of pods now again into your tank. But bottom line here is you're not starting World War III by introducing two mandarins at the same time. That's I don't think that's always the case with fish like tangs, um, pygmy angels, um, things of that nature. You do have to be careful about that. But with mandarins, typically you can have a really peaceful tank, uh, especially if you've got a tank of over 75 gallons. These fish are hardly going to run into each other um, as they're as they're making their making their way around the tank. All right, let's get these things drip acclimated. Now I know that in our hobby this is like everyone's least favorite process because it just takes a long time to drip water like this and have it fill up a bucket um, in time. I mean it's just a long process to get drip acclimated and we want to put the fish right away in our tank. In my experience with dragonets and mandarins, uh, these fish, drip acclimation is super important. If you, if you don't drip acclimate these fish, then they will really suffer in your tank. It'll get them a long time to get healthy, um, be active, um, feel comfortable enough to start hunting for food. I mean, that's what these fish do all day. So if you don't drip acclimate correctly, it can actually really affect the longevity of the life of this fish. All right, getting that drip acclimation going. Dripped out like diamonds. Just kidding. Um, but no, I'm actually really pleased with the size of these bad boys. I think that uh, Wilbur would have a tough time eating these. That's also kind of the nice thing about Dragonets or Mandarins. Again, I can't prove that Wilbur is eating um, the, the Dragonets or the Mandarins that I have put in this tank, but um, most fish actually won't even try to eat these because they're known for being kind of gross. They excrete some, um, it's, it's not necessarily poison, but they excrete these oils into the tank. You'll see it every once in a while. Um, it's not dangerous, it doesn't, it's not harmful to the tank, but fish just because of that don't want to eat them. So, um, and they're super peaceful. I mean, by introducing these fish to the tank, even though I've got 17 fish that are just very well established in this tank, like it's been a long time since I put anything new in this tank. Um, the, these guys aren't going to give my tank any trouble. So, And these aren't just my favorite fish, it's actually my brother's favorite fish too, especially that ruby red dragonette, so I'm going to go ahead and let him know. Hey Seth, something came in the mail for you today. These fish! <laughs> Got him! <he>. Got him! <laughs> I'm trying to get these bad boys acclimated as quickly as possible because the sleeping giant is sleeping. That's Wilbur there, my porcupine puffer. He's the only one I'm worried about. Got the rest of these fish. We'll have no problems at all. There's my mandarins. They know something's going on. They're all like hiding. My other advice, these fish, as docile as they look and seem, will jump out of a tank. Um, so you really should invest in a tank cover. That being said, I'm sort of a hypocrite in the sense that I don't have a tank cover here. I actually, in ordering these fish, um, just recently 
put in an order for a Red Sea um, kit to, to build my own tank cover. Um, I was hoping that that was going to come in before the fish, but it didn't. So there you go, Red Sea. Thanks for your uh, wonderful customer service. Just kidding, you make great tanks. So we've been drip acclimating our new friends here for about an hour. Let's go ahead and put these guys in the tank. So most of the time when I'm putting fish in the tank, um, you do not want to dump water coming in from these companies, like not just Live Aquaria, but anybody who sends you fish into your tank, because it could have copper in it. Um, could also have a variety of other things, uh, like ick or, or things like that. These fish are not really ick magnets. If you're dealing with like a powder blue tang or something like that, that really is a problem. But mandarins, that's probably fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use my, my hand to get them out of here and put them in the tank. Uh, we'll see how they take. This green mandarin is super active. He's like already like swimming around. That's really cool. Okay, the red, the ruby red's a little finicky. All right, let's check this out. The ruby red's made his way into the tank, just kind of sitting tight, kind of like he was in the bucket. He's not moving around a ton. Then we also got the green mandarin. And the green mandarin was actually hovering around for a little bit. That's kind of cool to see before he finally reached the bottom. That's a good thing. My only concern is the sleeping giant hasn't eaten yet. He just never woke up. So I'm hoping he doesn't wake up and make a meal out of these two. Keep an eye on these guys, see how they're doing. So far, I'm not really, I don't really have a ton of concerns. Hopefully we see their heads kind of bobbing towards the ground, which means that they've already found the pods and that they're starting to eat, that would be great. But so far nobody's bothering them. We'll let these guys get situated and we'll report back. Another thing that kind of helps when you're acclimating fish, by the way, is uh, you can actually turn off the lights and that actually uh, calms a lot of the other fish down. They kind of go into that sleep mode so they're not picking on any newcomers. But once again, with mandarins and dragonets, the nice thing is nobody really sees them as threatening, at least not in my, in my experience. So you typically don't really even have to do that. Yeah, this guy's nice and active. That's really cool. Just a couple moments later and the sleeping giant has woken up. So we're going to get this guy fed because we don't want him to find our new little friend and think he's a snack because that would be like a $60 snack. So we're going to take care of that right now. That's why you got to keep this bad boy fed because if this guy thinks anything's food, then it's gone in a matter of seconds. Did you hear that? I just saved your life, dude. Just saved your life. See, there's the purple tang who usually bothers other fish. Doesn't even bother this mandarin, which is pretty cool. Keep going. Feed him a huge piece of krill, see what happens. That's not gonna sit there long without Wilbur coming. Yeah, so, so I'm pretty pleased with the size of this ruby red. It's not the biggest I've had. I had one that almost doubled in size just because he was eating so well. I just think that fish think that this is a gross fish. Oh, man. Okay, between, that was scary. For a moment there, Wilbur had to choose between the krill or the new ruby red dragonette, and he chose the krill. Well done. I think we're going to make it. Wilbur eats so much, he gets like a little stomach. Do you see that? So this live aquaria shipment was a complete success. My dragonets are a great size. They are healthy. They are happy. And they are an instant color add to this tank. Can't wait to feature them in more videos. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Catch you later, Reef fam.